In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to make a cute little fleece hat with my free sewing pattern, and it has sizes for the entire family. Now, if you're new here, I'm Kim from Sweet Red Poppy, and welcome to my channel. Now, my hat pattern is really simple to sew, and it comes together quickly from cutting to the very last stitch. You're going to have a finished hat in less than one hour. Plus, it's a really great scrap buster, and it only requires a small amount of fabric. That's why I really love being able to make these adorable little fleece hats as gifts because they're super fast to sew and they don't use a lot of fabric. This fleece hat pattern actually includes eight different sizes. So it goes all the way from zero to six months, all the way up through adult sizes. The selection of sizes makes it really easy to make a hat for any one of your friends or anyone in your family this winter. As you can probably guess, fleece is going to be my favorite choice for this specific pattern. Fleece is cozy, it's soft, it's warm, it has a good amount of stretch, which really makes it perfect for a toasty winter hat. Plus, fleece is usually really affordable. I always find mine at Joanne while it's on sale. So it's a great choice if you plan to make several hats and you don't wanna end up spending a lot of money on fabric. However, you could also make this with another stretch fabric for your hat if you want something with a little bit of a different look. You could try something like a sweater knit or even a French terry if you wanted to go for a really thick and cozy hat or even a thinner knit like a jersey, which would make a great lightweight hat. Here's what you'll need for this project. You'll need one half yard of fleece or another stretch fabric and one fourth of a yard of lining fabric. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a rotary cutter, your rotary cutting mat, thread, sewing pins, a sewing machine. You could also use a serger if you have one. And you will also need a printer, printing paper, and tape to put together your pattern. Step one, download and assemble the fleece hat pattern. First, go ahead and download the free pattern to your computer. I want you to open it in your PDF reader, so you should be using Adobe Acrobat for the very best experience. It's important that you do not print the pattern directly from your browser. This is going to cause it to have some wonky border lines and the scaling will be incorrect if you do it this way. So go ahead and download it. Next, I want you to, to click on the print button and that's going to open the print settings dialog box. In the scaling section of this box, go ahead and select actual size or custom scaling 100%. Go ahead and print off page one of this pattern. Once you have this printed, go ahead and measure this square. It should measure one inch. If your test square measures one by one, then go ahead and print the rest of your pattern. If however, the square does not measure one by one, you will need to go back and recheck your print settings and reprint the entire pattern. Now this pattern does include a layers option. That's going to allow you to print only the size or sizes that you want to sew. To use this feature, select the icon that looks like two stacked papers in Adobe Acrobat, then deselect the I icon next to each size that you do not wish to print. Once the pattern has been printed, go ahead and arrange the pages according to the layout chart below. You'll want to use the lines of the pattern and the pink stars to align the pages accurately. Now, when you're taping these papers together, you can either trim the margins off or you can just overlap the edges of the papers. Now, if you choose to overlap the margins, it can help to hold the pages up to the light so that you align those edges perfectly. Finally, let's go ahead and cut out the two pattern pieces along the lines for the size that you want to sew. Now, you should have two pattern pieces. You have your main body of the hat as well as the hem of the hat. Step two, cut out the materials. Now, once you have your pattern pieces cut out, it is time to cut out your fabric. I want you to start by laying out your main fabric so that the direction with the greatest stretch is running from left to right. Then I want you to bring the left edge of the fabric up and over to match up with the right edge of the fabric. Next, go ahead and lay the hem pattern piece on the fabric. You're going to line up the side that is marked fold with the fold of your fabric and then pin the pattern piece to the fabric and cut around the bottom, top, and right hand edges. You wanna make sure you're not cutting the side where we have that fold. Go ahead and repeat this process with the main body pattern piece. Again, we're going to line it up against the side that's folded, lining up that little fold line, and then we're going to cut along the top of this pattern piece as well as the bottom. Next, cut a second main body piece, and this is going to be from your lining fabric. Step three, sew the body of the hat. Now with all the materials cut out, it is time to start sewing up our hat. First, I want you to lay the main body piece cut from your outer fabric on your table. 
go ahead and fold it in half with right sides together. I want you to lay it out so that the fold is to the left. Go ahead and pin the long curved edge together on the right hand side. Then you're going to pin the edges together above the fold on the left side. Now go ahead and stitch the long edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And next I want you to stitch the pinned upper portion of the opposite side with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, tapering off the fabric when you get to that fold. Now go ahead and repeat this process and stitch your lining in the same exact way. Here's a pro tip, rather than back stitching, leave those long thread tails after you've tapered off the fabric, then you can go back and just tie them into a knot. I find sometimes back stitching in this type of a situation can result in a puckered area in the fabric, so tying off those thread tails is really going to give you a neater, cleaner finish. Next, I want you to match up the two seams and pin them together. You wanna to make sure that the right sides of the fabric are together still. Next, you're going to pin the rest of the seam over the top of the hat, and you're going to stop where the cut edges of the fabric end on either side of the hat. Stitch the seam over the top of the hat with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Again, you're going to leave those long thread tails at the beginning and at the end where you have tapered your stitching off of the fabric. Then go ahead and tie off the thread tails on each of your seams and trim them close to the knots. Step four, it is time to repair the hemband. Let's go ahead and finish off this adorable hat. To do this, start by folding the hemband in half with right sides together. We are going to be lining up the short ends and then I want you to pin the short ends together. Then you're going to stitch the short ends together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Next up, we are going to fold the hemband in half with wrong sides together. We wanna to make sure that we are matching up the raw edges at the top. Step five, assemble the hat. Now let's go ahead and assemble this cute winter hat. With the lining hat inside out, I want you to place it inside of the outer body of the hat. Now the wrong side of your lining hat should be against the wrong side of the outer hat. Now I wanna make sure that we are lining up this seam from our outer hat with the lining hat. So we have the seam line going all the way along that hat. Let's just line those off and make sure that these seam allowances are lined up and that they are open and offset. Now keep going around this raw edge of the hat and you can pin everything together. Once you have your hem band and your hat all pinned together, we're just going to use a basting stitch to baste our raw edges together in place because we are going to be joining these. It doesn't need a permanent stitch right now. So let's go ahead and increase our stitch length. So I'm gonna go up to a five. And that's going to help me to create just a temporary stitch that just holds things in place. Now, if you're super confident, you can go ahead and skip this and you could just pin everything together. we are going to place the hem band over the hat and we're going to be lining up the raw edges of our hem band with the raw edges of our hat. Now because we have so much fleece and multiple layers and it's getting pretty thick, I'm going to make sure that I am aligning this seam allowance on the opposite side of the hat where I don't have a seam allowance. Otherwise you're going to end up with so much thickness that your machine might struggle to get through it. And at this point, don't be afraid to add lots of pins. The more pins you add at this step, the better it's going to turn out. Everything's going to line up nicely and it's going to stay in place while we're sewing. Now it's time for us to stitch the hemband to the hat. I'm going to use a zigzag stitch and I'm still using that 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now here's a little tip. We are sewing through four layers of fleece, so it's getting pretty thick. If you have an adjustable presser foot pressure, then you may want to adjust that right now. You'll have to look up your specific machine to do this. Mine is just located up here and I am going to put that so I have the least amount of resistance possible. And what that means is it's just going to lift my presser foot up just a little bit so that I can have all four layers under here 
and my machine is still going to move forward. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a zigzag stitch. And the reason for that is when we put our hat on, it's going to stretch a little bit and a zigzag stitch or even a knit stitch is going to give us a little bit of stretch within our seam allowance so that our seams are not popping when we're putting it on because that would be such a bummer. So let's go ahead and start sewing. Don't forget to remove your pins as you go. And if you come to one of these spots where we have a seam allowance and it's really thick, don't be afraid to grab onto the back of this fabric and the front and just push it through a little bit. And if you come across any puckers at this point, you can just really gently stretch your fabrics so that they fit together. You don't want to overstretch them, but just enough so that you don't have to have that big pucker. Go ahead and fold that hemband down and away from the hem and press the seam flat. If you need to get it even flatter, you could press it with a cool iron. You want to make sure it's not too hot to melt this and you could even pound it flat with a mallet. Now at this point, your hat is finished. However, you might want to add a line of top stitching just right here above the hemband. Or if you have a serger, you might wanna go ahead and just finish this raw edge. Now at this point, if you would like to add a pom-pom, you can go ahead and do that now. I like to secure my pom-pom with, let me just show you. I have a little button on the top of my hat that way I can remove my pom-pom if I need to rinse my hat, if it gets dirty, and then I don't have to put this through the washer or the dryer. And then it has a little ponytail holder on it, and then I can just secure it back in place. To do this, go ahead and take a length of thread, and we are going to insert it from the lining side up through the top center point of the hat. And I have knotted the end of my string, and I grabbed a little button. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this button onto the top. Once you have secured your button, go ahead and tie off your thread tails. Now go ahead and take your little pom-pom and you can tie it around your button and secure it in place. And there I have my hat with my little pom-pom. Congrats, your cozy winter hat is all finished. Be sure to check out my other fleece patterns. I have mittens, a gaiter, a tie fleece blanket, a headband, and so many more on my website, sweetredpoppy.com. If you love crafting videos, especially all things sewing, then be sure to subscribe to my channel, Sweet Red Poppy, and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. I'll see you next time.